You know, the comments section on YouTube is a great place to find content. I found some right here. Now, when you're running a Holly carburetor, or actually any carburetor, but Holly specifically for our point of view, you gotta have a fuel line to it, right? Well, this is my setup. It's just a couple of pieces of rubber hose, hose clamps, and connectors. And you know what? That scares a lot of people in the comments section. They're afraid you're going to burn the whole rig down, or, I mean, and this is as bare bones a setup as you could possibly get. Just a big piece of hose here, a short piece of hose here, a T, you know, three-way T, and some hose clamps. Believe it or not, that was designed for this exact purpose. Connecting a hose to some sort of T. Notice, this has even got some knurling here to better hold the hose. And you know what? There's a good reason why I use this setup. Two very particular ones, to be exact. Reason number one, it's so much cheaper. I mean, I did run AN lines on the Cutlass, and probably one AN fitting costs the exact same as this entire setup. Literally. That stuff's expensive. And then the braided line? For what? It, I don't need braided line up here. This is not in any way, shape, or form in danger of getting damaged right there. If you're not going to run braided line up here, people will say, get the solid line. Solid, you know, fuel line that goes here. Well, I don't want to run that. No, reason number two. It, with this setup, I don't have to take the fuel lines off at all to change jets. They're flexible. I can take the bowl off and flex everything else out of the way. With a solid fuel line, you have to take the actual fuel line off in order to chain to get the bowl off to change jets. That's one more step I don't need. You know, a lot of people are afraid that the modern gas is going to deteriorate this hose. And if you're using old hose, that could indeed be a problem. But pretty much anything new that you pick up at the store, I mean, any new fuel line, is rated for that extra ethanol in the gas. They have to be. They're used on cars, daily drivers, from the factory. They, you know, the gas ain't gonna hurt it. And the gas isn't gonna hurt your carburetor either. A lot of people are afraid of that too, but no. I've been running 10% ethanol, 91 octane, in this car ever since we've had it. Not once have I ever had a carburetor issue. Really, the ethanol evaporates. I mean, it, the gas goes out into the open through the vents, right? If it sits for any amount of time. The old stuff wouldn't do that. The old stuff would just sit there and turn to varnish and clog everything up. The 10% ethanol cleans itself out. You don't really have to worry. You know what? That's why I buy the 10% ethanol. And don't spring for the extra non-ethanol gas. It's more expensive and you don't get anything out of it. It's not worth the extra expense. You, you don't get anything back from spending that much more. Same thing with the AN lines. The braided fuel line and stuff. For the carburetor? Why? I, you're spending gobs of money for no reason. I mean, you do what you want to do. You want to spring the extra money, go for it. Or if you want to run a solid fuel line and then you don't mind taking it off every time you need to do a jet change, go for it. I mean, you do you. But I'd rather use that money for speed parts rather than, you know, just, there you go. Well, that's been that. And I'll catch you next time.